Um, in answer to your question, um, most of us have injuries with the feminine or the masculine or both. The reason why we have those injuries is because when we were children, obviously our parents have injuries with femininity or masculinity or both, and generally with both. Mm -hmm. And our parents have a combination of, like our, our father would have certain injuries regarding his mother and his father, and our mother would have <coughs> certain injuries regarding her mother and her father. And the combination of those two things creates mm -hmm. inside of us a, a list of emotions, if you like, that cause our attractions. So if I'm a male and my mother and father have certain injuries and I identify in particular with one of those parents, so let's say I, in my case I identify with my mother's injuries, I then take on many of those injuries towards <coughs> myself as a male. So my mother's injuries towards her father were that, you know, her father was an abusive drunkard <coughs> and he abused his, his wife and, and some of his children, or all of his children. And, and my mother's emotions about that obviously are quite strong in terms of negatively strong about men, generally. And then my father also has quite a few emotions about himself as a man that, uh, that are quite strong in the sense of, uh, of unworthiness and feelings like that. Now, I, when I incarnated into those environments, add that to the feeling that I've just lost my father, my heavenly father, mm -hmm. and lost my soulmate and that it's all my fault. And that created within me all these groups of emotions that, that then created my attractions. And so I was attracted mm -hmm. to women who, I could, who were like my mother, who I could, who I could help and look after. Mm. And, uh, and ironically, they couldn't love me and they were always stressed out by me as a result. Because of course I wasn't being loving. I was actually well, to be their father, really, in a way. And so, um, obviously, that attracted, uh, um, that that created so many different. I had so many different injuries about masculinity and femininity within myself. What I had to do before I could actually know who my soulmate was was actually work through those injuries, emotionally, work through those injuries. So I had to let go, and um, by letting go, emotionally experience what all of those injuries were about. <coughs> And uh, that took, that's, that's taken me uh, nearly, well it's taken, it, it took 11 years before I met my soulmate after beginning that process. Um, because I was not before that time ready to even recognise her. Um, so my suggestion, if you want to meet your soulmate, mm. is firstly to focus on dealing with every <coughs> single emotional injury within yourself relating to masculinity or femininity. Once you deal with those, there's a very high likelihood you, you, it'll just come to you who your soulmate is. Now that being said, there's some people I know uh, overseas who have spent, who, who have just basically focused their energy on wanting to deal with their own emotions. <clears throat> and what they've done is they've actually longed to God, they've actually prayed to God to know who their soulmate is and longed that, to, to God that whatever happens, that they can trigger their emotions inside of themselves so they can meet their soulmate. And I know one lady in particular who did this and within two weeks she knew exactly who her soulmate was. Right. And she's not with him. She, she's, uh, she's, she's, in a mar she's married and she knows who her soulmate was and her, and her soulmate's not her husband. And uh, her soulmate lives in another country actually. Um, but now what she's doing is working through her emotional injuries that prevents mm. them from being together. Now once she does that, he will automatically be attracted into her life. And this is what I found myself like, as I was working through those injuries, I all of a sudden <coughs> feel like I've got to move to Queensland. I lived in South Australia, I lived in South Australia mm -hmm. all my life. But I just felt like I've got to move to Queensland. And initially I was thinking, oh, Airlie Beach or <laughs> somewhere like that. And I actually, at one stage of my life, had some property developments that was happening up there. And, uh, and I thought that would be the way, place I would go. But then one day I just decided, oh, I've got to go to Queensland. And I came to Brisbane and then I just drove up the coast. And I drove up the coast, checking out different things, <laughs> going to spiritual churches and a few other things. And, and I finished up meeting up with this medium. Uh, her name is Hannah. She lives away up at uh, 
Glen Elder, I think it is, which is sort of near Harvey Bay. And so I drove all the way out there, and as I drove, I drove through Gympie. And what do I see at Signs on the Razor? All this Mary stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you see that every day, right? Almost, if you drive out that way. The Mary River, of course. Me, though, I'm having these huge emotions <clears throat> driving up there. My Mary's here somewhere, like my Mary's here somewhere. So I just felt that, yeah, somewhere around Gympie was, was Mary, you know. And as it turned out, I met this man as a result of meeting this medium who invited me up to give some talks where I met people like Helga and Gloria and different ones and, and uh, um, Angela and Gary and different ones that I've met that, you know, have now <coughs> been time with. And, and, uh, and so he, he decided he wanted to run a few groups, so I did a few groups there. And guess who came along? Uh, Not Mary. <laughs> her parents. Her parents. Mm -hmm. And so I met her parents. And uh, this was a year ago, over a year ago now, 18 months ago. And so unbeknown to me, my mm -hmm. own soulmate's parents I'd just met. Um, and, I, and I've even seen photos of, of her um, when I visited their home. Um, and they began running some groups in their home and I occasionally visited their home and did those groups. And, and I'd see photos of Mary, but I, you know, it wasn't anything to do with the photo or anything or how she looked or anything like that. She was in Lebanon at the time, living there. And I knew, I had a feeling as well that although my soulmate is somewhere around here, she's actually overseas, mm. was the feeling I had. And so what happens after a while is you start, because you're connected with your emotions and your feelings, and you're releasing these injuries about masculinity and femininity, you're starting now to attract your soulmate back to you. Right. Now at the same time, unbeknown to me, but we've now talked about it, at the same time, Mary, I go through this huge turmoil in about November of last year, where I'm feeling like my soulmate's lost to me for good. <clears throat> that was the feeling I was having. And I went, uh, I think some of you knew about that, and I went down to the Sunshine Coast and I just stayed there for a week. And the feeling I had was three quarters away into the week was that, hang a sec, no, no, actually everything's going to be all right now. Unbeknown to me, right at that same moment, the same week, she was considering getting married to a man in Lebanon. Right? And I didn't know. And I only found out this recently. And by the end of the week, they'd broken up. <clears throat> a month later, she's back in Australia. And I met her four or five days, a few weeks after she came back. Because her parents ran a group <laughs> at their place, which I attended. And, and so I met her for the first time, I, and I knew instantly who I'd just met. Um, but she didn't know at all, and still doesn't really believe it either. Uh, although she has certain emotions associated with it now. So I met her right <coughs> there and then. Her first emotion towards me it was a week later was one of extreme anger. <laughs> and uh, it's due to some things coming up from her feelings about the first century and the choices that I made in the first century. So I suppose what I'm saying is, after all of that, is that if you deal with your masculine and feminine emotional injuries <coughs> and you then start trusting where your soul is leading you, <coughs> you will actually find the soulmate. And then, because you've dealt with the masculine and feminine injuries inside of yourself, when you meet her, you will know who she is, or him, you'll know who he is. And, and as a result of that, you may have lots of emotions to deal with as well, because they may reject you. <laughs> and you will need to work through those emotions too, if you still have them. But if you go through that process, you will definitely meet your soulmate here on earth. Pretty much guaranteed.